finally getting back to the QSC Touch Mix 30 Pro. I stopped uh, filming on this for a little while because there were just too many things to do to uh, video it as well. So I'm going to try and recap what I've done. It was uh, interesting, uh, it was challenging, it was a bit terrifying at times. Uh, when I left off, uh, I tested it. Uh, it seemed to be working fine, but I um, thought, okay, I will uh, let it run for a little while just to make sure everything's operating. And uh, I had left it uh, running on my bench for about a half an hour while I went and did something else. When I came back, the whole thing was dead. The screen was uh, dark. There was no indication of power on it. And uh, that's a sinking feeling. Um, because I couldn't see any reason for that happening. So um, I had to kind of start from square one again and uh, start uh, looking at the power supplies and to see what was going on there. So here's what I learned, uh, first of all, about the power supplies is that uh, the way this thing is set up, the way it's designed, is they, um, they take the AC power coming in, they go to a off-board uh, 12 volt power supply. Uh, it's, it's inside the unit but it's uh, attached to the bottom panel and um, I don't know how many amps it's capable of but it's quite a few amps. So it's, it's a heavy duty 12 volt supply and then what they do is they take that 12 volts, they go onto the main board and they then have a number of uh, step up and step down kinds of power supplies or buck or boost power supplies in there that um, convert that 12 volts to plus minus 15, um, plus 5, plus 3.3, plus 1.2, um, there may be some others. And all those different supplies are used in different parts of the circuitry. Um, the 12 volt supply was working fine. It had a little uh, uh, green light on it. I used my multimeter to check the voltage. It was 12 volts out when it was disconnected, but when uh, and, and there was 12 volts on it when it was connected. But when I looked further, what I found was that the plus minus 15 volt supply uh, was not uh, working at all. In fact, what would happen is when you first turn on the power, um, you would get nothing, and then after a, a delay on the negative side of that, you would get nine, minus 19 volts. And on the positive side, you get 0.7 volts or something like that. So that definitely was not right. So I started trying to troubleshoot this uh, 15 uh, plus minus 15 volt supply, anyways. And um, uh, I, I have a schematic uh, that I was able to get. And um, the first thing I realized that being a boost kind of supply, it's a switching power supply. Basically, it takes the 12 volts. Um, chops it up, puts it through a transformer, uh, rectifies it, um, and the, the transformer is a um, dual output winding so that you can get a plus supply and a minus supply out of that. Uh, and as, uh, as many switching, or all switching power supplies, there's feedback. Well, feedback is the bane of my existence, it seems, in some days, um, because in a situation like this, uh, when something goes wrong in a circuit like that, it's very difficult to tell where the beginning of the problem is unless you can actually just measure a component or see a component that's physically overheated or, or whatever. Um, because somewhere in that loop, you have something wrong. Um, you may have your 12 volts in, but you cannot necessarily tell where the, the problem arises because the you have to chop it up and then send it through and um, uh, bring that signal back with feedback so it tells it what that voltage should be. Um, but uh, where I started was to do some just power off um, ohmmeter checking of components. You look for first bad capacitors because capacitors tend to dry out over time. The second thing you look for uh, semiconductors that may have uh, become damaged. And in this circuit, uh, there are some uh, uh, P-channel and N-channel MOSFETs. Um, there are some 
uh, there's an integrated circuit uh, that's used for controlling the switching power supply. There's a um, an op amp uh, that's used in a kind of a comparator sort of function, and there's some other odds and ends that um, are would be you know likely suspects. So very quickly, I found that uh, one of the main switching MOSFET was uh, shorted out. I uh, have no idea why it shorted out, um, but it seems that something caused that MOSFET to fail. So I um, ordered components and uh, brought in that MOSFET. There was actually a, a P-channel and an N-channel. I brought in both of those. Uh, got some caps that are, were associated with it, um, that circuit, and also the, the, the switching IC. It's a 16-pin um, uh, surface mount chip, which is in itself uh, a challenge to replace. Um, so I ordered all those parts in and um, replaced, first of all, the MOSFET and uh, got no, no improvement. So I went from there to uh, replacing the other MOSFET, uh, then replacing the uh, switching power supply chip, and uh, finally the comparator chip, which I had in uh, stock, I didn't have to order. And um, none of these things fixed the problem. So here's the main board. So the plus minus 15 volt power supply is actually located in this section. The 12 volts plus or just plus 12 volts comes in on these connect this connector down here, and a lot of the circuitry on this part of the board is uh, uh, power supply related. But this is the part that does most of the plus uh, minus 15 volt, and I've labeled some of the components here. So just for reference, um, the um, two MOSFETs that I replaced are these two right here. There's a cap associated with them that's located here, number three. Regulator chip that I mentioned, it's a 16-pin um, surface mount chip, is right here, number four. And there's a TLO72 op amp used as a comparator over here. And then there's also a little voltage reference device here that um, was suspect at one point and it turned out not to be the problem. This is the transformer that um, the input side is switched by these uh, MOSFETs and then the output side is recti it's got dual outputs. It's actually got three um, secondaries, uh, two for the plus minus 15 volts and one secondary for a supply to send voltage back to this chip so that the chip is powered. The only ones that I'm absolutely sure were a problem was this MOSFET and um, this chip may or may not have been a problem. Maybe that I installed it wrong the first way at time. I, it was in the right way around but it um, may have not had a good solder joint in some place. Sometimes it's hard to see that. Finally, I uh, started getting into troubleshooting a little further and learned a little more about how this particular supply worked and um, found a very uh, obscure and uh, unusual kind of uh, problem where there was a uh, surface mount resistor which had a cold solder joint. Now, why it worked before uh, and then it stopped working. Uh, it didn't seem to have gotten hot. I, I, I don't have an explanation for that. There's a 0.06 ohm resistor and it's actually a sensing resistor for um, monitoring the amount of current out. These are those two resistors. This one was fine when I measured across it. It measured virtually uh, zero ohms. Um, and this one uh, was actually open. It showed open measuring with a ohmmeter. Uh, but when I actually took the chip off of here, the actual resistor, and measured, uh, it was fine. And so I resoldered it on there, checked it, and it was then working. And that was the first step in bringing this thing back to life. So I've replaced a known bad MOSFET 
and then I fixed this bad solder joint, but it still did not work. At that point, I was getting a plus minus voltage on the output of the supply, but it was only seven and a half volts. So I delved into the specs on this power supply controller and learned that if it wasn't getting uh, the proper feedback, uh, that would be the voltage it would go to. So finally, uh, I found that uh, this uh, comparator, when I re reinstalled that, uh, all of a sudden my power supply came back. So it seems like just about anything that could go wrong has gone wrong on this little project here. And everything seemed to be working just fine. And uh, so I was going to move forward with uh, putting in screws and uh, putting this thing back together and continuing to test. And I was about to go on to the next step and I looked over beside it and there I found a cap sitting on the bench. And I was quite sure that I hadn't removed this cap. I was quite sure it wasn't something that I just had sitting around. So I thought I'd better look into this more closely and the cap was a 220 microfarad at 25 volts. And uh, I, there were other caps like this and some other uh, caps on this board that were a little different style. This is a surface mount cap. So I thought I'd better take out that main board again, took all the screws out again, and uh, turned it over and uh, went searching and finally found that it had fallen off the board. And I know I was pretty careful with the board. It's possible I might have bumped it a little bit but uh, nothing out of line. Anyways, I did finally find the uh, place where it came off. So I'm going to put a little solder flux on there. Probably a little too much there, but I don't think I need to use the hot air gun for one of these. The pads are accessible from the side. Okay, so that should be okay. I'm going to start again here and put things back together once more and do some testing. So, rather than subject you all to several minutes of watching me put the 120 screws back into this uh, touch mix unit uh, and uh, showing you the inputs and outputs that I've already shown you. I thought I would just wrap this up with uh, just a quick explanation of uh, what I did to finish up. Once I had uh, soldered the capacitor back on, I powered up the board and checked the power supplies. Everything seemed to be working fine. I uh, put the board back into the unit and connected up all the connectors and uh, applied a signal and I did get a good signal out so everything appeared to be working. Now the one thing that I did do um, was I had been noticing that the circuitry in this thing tends to run hot. Some of the components get pretty warm up in the 40 uh, degrees C range. Uh, I used my little uh, temperature, uh, non-contact temperature sensor here to um, uh, check out the board to see where the hot spots were. I wanted to see if something was heating up that um, uh, for some reason that I didn't know about. Uh, and uh, it does run a little hot, and there's no doubt about that. And there's no cooling fan in this unit. So one thing I do think about this touch mix is that 
Uh, it needs good ventilation, and I would even say it might be uh, a candidate for setting it on one of these um, laptop cooler units or, or even installing a um, fan for cooling the thing. Uh, that can add noise um, and put an extra demand on the power supply, so I'm not sure it's the best uh, idea. Uh, so, uh, anyways, I put it back together and uh, I did it in stages, checking these temperatures and everything looked good. Um, so I finally uh, put the cover on, uh, put the sides on the unit and uh, continued to test it and it never did fail on me again. Uh, so I think that's uh, where we have to wrap this one up. Thanks for joining me on this. Uh, thank you for your likes. Um, would encourage you to subscribe if you will. And um, we've got some more videos coming out. Some of them are electronics. Some of them are um, more around the house um, fix-it jobs. And uh, so we'll bring those out uh, very soon. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.